Awesome. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, scripture and prayer. I got scripture. Stop it. <laughs> Sorry. I got Psalm 47. I don't know if it was read already, but it I got It's too funny. That's okay. <laughs> Barely got it out your mouth. She huh? had it already. She waited. I, yeah, I yeah, I did. Estelle was ready. I meant to be ready with scripture, but I'm not. <laughs> okay. All right. Psalm 47. I'm reading out of the um uh what is it? The English Standard Version. So okay. Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy, for the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Mm. That's the reading of Psalm 47 in the English Standard Version. So keep the Duncan family in prayer at the loss of Deacon Duncan's sister. And for uh, Joanne, who um, is a friend of Our family. Michelle's mom's, yeah, family friend, and she's got leukemia. So we're praying for healing for her. And let me think. I had my list, and I'm I'm don't know what I did with it. I think I left it in the sanctuary. But um, Sister Jen for her back. Keep Sister Kathy in prayer. Things are things are going well for her right now. Oh, Looking cool. up and. Um, just people, you know, holidays can be so rough for some people. And um, even though it's just a few days out of the year, it just seems like the whole season yeah. takes That's people, so wipes them out. Yeah. And I mean, I get it, but so just keep them. And it's getting colder, the homeless that are out there, people in need. Oh, and uh, Nashville. The bombing in Nashville. Oh, yeah. Keep them in just praying that it's not the start of something bigger. It's awful. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Very scary stuff. Mm. Yeah. Just this new year. Thanking God for 2020. I mean, it wasn't all bad. There was a lot of great things that ended up happening in 2020, but going into 2021, just... Mm -hmm. continuing to grow and change right right have you heard from sister Teresa? is she doing is she okay she's been on um she's been on the bible studies i know i see her she's been she was on the service the other morning um rev mm -hmm. said he talks to her quite often and okay. she's, she's getting through she's okay you know she's still going through so Okay. In prayer, and right. Sister Johnson. Okay. And uh, Michelle, what was your friend's name? Uh, Joanne. My mom uh, worked for an attorney as an executive uh, administrative secretary for many, many years, and they they keep <laughs> he's in his nineties, mm. and they keep in contact and. Um, whenever there's something going on with him, because he, he's, he's a cancer survivor as well. But he called up this morning just in, just so in tears and uh, wanted my mom to know that uh, his, his daughter has leukemia. My mom never knew, that was never shared. And, and you know, we, we know them, we know the family. Mm. And she's been in the hospital for the past two weeks. 
Mm. So, um, and, you know, my mom said, you definitely, we will pray for you. And um, she told us about it this morning. And I told my mom I would share it with our Bible study group mm. in the church. So, yeah. Joanne. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, our Heavenly Father, we come to you and we're just so thankful, Lord, that we're here another day. Yes. And Lord, we just ask you during these times, there's so many people that are hurting and, you know, who are lost and Lord, who just don't know you. And we're just asking you, Lord, to just come into their life and just strengthen them. Even though even Christians are going through a hard time, Lord, it's not that we don't believe, but Lord, sometimes we just get weak. And we yeah. just ask you to come in and just strengthen us. Let us know that you're with us wherever we go and whatever we do. Yes. Lord, just continue to direct us as we go forth. And, you know, we want to pray for our group, Lord, that it will grow in yeah. strength and that, Lord, that we will, you know, make sure that we keep you foremost in our prayers and whatever we do and whatever we think we come now asking you to pray for sister jen and her back and that you would just heal her and take away any pain that she may have i know she's been suffering with her back for years and lord you're the only one who can come in and relieve any pain that she has so lord we just come to you and just ask you for that direction and sister kathy we just want to pray that she continue to stay in your word and she continue to go strong as she is moves into her new place and you know brother duncan who's been a faithful member our heavenly father lost his sister and i know his heart and i know he wants to go back and see her and visit her but that is you know i know that's impossible but lord you can come into his life and comfort him and strengthen him yes, and you know yes. just direct him and his family we know that you know it you know it won't only affect him it's going to affect you know his wife and his kids that are around him so lord we're just asking you to just upgrade this family and just keep them close to you as they go through this trying time and we want to pray for our sister Teresa, who has been here with us for a number of our meetings and we just want you to do whatever she's going through to strengthen her and uplift her and let her know lord that you are with her no matter what she goes through she has been a faithful and dedicated member she always has something positive to say lord so not right now she just needs that strength and that and let her know, put people in her life that will continue to uplift her as she goes through whatever she's going through. And we want to pray for Sister Johnson, who, you know, has been an, a faithful member of a church and she's so dedicated to the ladies and making sure that they have what they need and taking care of their needs. We just want to pray that you will just uplift her and strengthen her, Lord, give her the rest that she may need and you know so that she can be able to you know take care of herself and also go back and take care of her ladies but lord we just ask you to just continue to be with her as she goes through these trying times with her ladies and we just want to pray for you know uh, sister joanne who has leukemia and you know, her father is, you know, concerned and worried about her. And Lord, we just want to uplift you to her. You know, being in the hospital for two weeks during these times, it's really hard. So, you know, we just want to ask you to just be with her. You know, let her know, Lord, that you that you are her provider and you there, anything that she needs, that you'll be there with her. And then, Lord, we look towards our church family, our pastor and his family, and we ask you to uplift him. And, you know, so much is put on him as a pastor. You know, even though the congregation may not be there, the Lord, there's so many other things that are pulling on him in community that, you know, want him to be involved in and be part of. So, Lord, we just ask you to continue to strengthen him and guide him into the way that you know you want him to go and we want to pray for you know our 
other pastors and we want to pray for the deacons of the church lord that you continue to help them in these times and guide them where they have to go we want to pray for the staff of the church yes lord. that they're coming in working you know even during these times make sure that you know everything yes, is the way it's supposed to be our heavenly father so we want to thank you for that and their faithfulness and their dedication to you and Lord, we want to pray for our church and our church family. You know, we've lost some members over the past couple of months. And, you know, it's not easy, to, you know, to not be able to be there with these, with the families and share, you know, how we feel and just let them know that we love them. But Lord, as they go through this, just stay with those families and strengthen them as they go through these trying times. Yes. And Lord, we just want to pray for our nation we want to pray for you know the healing of our nation you know i'm not sure what happened in nashville but you know it's just so much anger and so much yeah. hatred that's going around lord and you know just show us how we can be that vessel to change the things that are happening in this world our heavenly father you know we know that you are the in charge of everything that goes on but you put us here as your workers so that we you can use us to do what you want to be done so lord we just come now and just ask you to you know call on the christians and just ask them to you know look to you for what they need i have new father so we come now with all these with all these things that are on our mind and we're pressing and just ask you to just guide us as we go through these, you know, into 2021, that we will keep our minds folded and on you, our Heavenly Father. All these things we ask in our Son's name is for our sake, do we pray, amen. 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 All right, let me get this up here. And so this was kind of a... <laughs> And excuse the typos if they're there. This was a long type, and I had just gotten done typing out Jim's lessons, which are really <laughs> long ones to type. And my fingers, like, I felt like they were going to fall off. So I was going through today, and um, I noticed even on the first line where it says, Tychicus, a dear brother, it said, a dear broth. <laughs> <laughs> so I added the ER in there. So if you were looking at it and thought broth, with my fingers, I was. <laughs> oh dear, bro. Anyway, all right. So we have a new one, the cast and crew. And so we're. I think this is. Um, we're getting close to the end of this book. Actually, mm -hmm. this is. I want to say close. Let me see. Um, there's just a few days of it left. Like, you know, this, like the cast and crew is a day, but it'll take us a few weeks to go through. But um, we're close to the end of that book. So mm. we still have a little, it'll take us a little while. Um, so the focus for this particular section, the scripture is Colossians 4, 7 to 18. So now we're going a little bit further in. And I did type out a lot of the, they did a lot of scripture reference. And so I tried to type in the scripture so we wouldn't have to keep going back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, it's easier. It's it's a little more work, but it's worth it because then you don't have to keep going. You know, I don't have to keep putting the screen back and forth because that makes people dizzy. So <laughs> it works out. <laughs> so I can read the scripture if you want. So it says, pray for insight, then read the section of scripture that will be our focus for the day, Colossians 4, 7 through 18. Um, and then we can get into the different questions. Uh, all right, four and seven. Tychicus, a dear brother, faithful minister, and fellow slave in the Lord, will tell you all the news about me. I sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are doing and that he may encourage your hearts. 
I sent him with Onesimus, the faithful and dear brother, who is one of you. They will tell you about everything here. Aristarchus, okay, my fellow mm -hmm. prisoner, <laughs> sends you greetings, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, about whom you received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. And Jesus, who is called Justice, also sends greetings. In terms of Jewish converts, these are the only fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have been a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you and a slave of Christ, greets you. He is always struggling in prayer on your behalf so that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. Or I'm going to read, I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Sorry. Mm -hmm. For I can testify that he has worked hard for you and for those in Laodicea and Heropolis. Our dear friend Luke, the physician, and Demas greet you. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters who are in Laodicea, Laodicea and to Nympha and the church that meets in her house. And after you have read this letter, have read it to the church of Luke have it read to the church of Laodicea. In turn, read the letter from Laodicea as well. And tell Archippus, see to it that you complete the ministry you received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting by my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. Okay. Mm. I'm going to bring this up. And then it says, in the book of Colossians and the book of Philemon, we find an interesting cast of characters. In fact, I know of a seminary student who created a playbill version of Philemon, complete with actor photos. As I recall, she cast Danny DeVito as Paul. <laughs> oh, Lord. Sean Connery as Philemon and Demi Moore as Aphia. <laughs> <laughs> Below us oh, wow. are the main characters and some of the information we have about them. Fill in what we find out in the text about each of the following individuals. If you are a movie buff, consider whom you might cast if you were making a movie. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I don't know if it's at Fia or Afia, I I'm, don't know how to say her name. Either way. Afia. Yeah, I, I yeah. agree with Alicia, either way. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Either way. Yeah. Right. So it says Philemon 1 and 2, which I put in there, to Afia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your house. Aphia, or whatever, was most likely Philemon's wife. How does Paul describe her? And if you look at that scripture, all it really says about her is to our sister. Our sister. Our sister. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it just says to the church. Think, that, oh, go ahead. And I don't know. It could be a different version. I have the... Um, just the King James version, and it was it said, "Our our beloved Afia." Did did you see that? I that think it King was, James is in there. King, yeah. King, oh, okay. They so call her beloved or James. beloved. And did they say what she what other than her associate you know family association? Do they say describe her or say anything about her? No, it was just okay. the beloved, it was beloved Afia. It didn't okay. even say sister. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Does anyone else's? I got mine out of the NIV. Oh, oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. I didn't get out of the NIV. I got it in whatever was from the book. Okay. 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 The poor women, they forget. <laughs> right? They don't get much of anything. <laughs> yeah, it says, um, a brother and our dearly beloved. So it's in that second verse of uh, Philemon, and it says, and to our be beloved Aphia, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. That's, yeah. that's all, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, they thought of her. They said beloved, but after that, yeah, right. 
Yeah. And so, I mean, I guess I could see why they thought it was Philemon's wife. Mm. And, okay, yeah, I don't know. Mm. And who would I cast? I have no idea. No clue. No. Mm. Yeah. I'd have more fun putting people from our church in, in what part. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's funny. Uh, we could do that, too. That's yeah. true. That is funny, you yeah. very much could. All right. Uh, Dan DeVito, I would not see him as a Paul. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't either. I'm like, oh my gosh. I could see like, oh, who could I see as Paul? Um, someone like, because they'd have to be playing someone in prison, but that could be Delegating. I mean, even still, he delegated things out, didn't he? Um, he used so many different people to be able to do what he needed to do. Yeah. I'm not that familiar with too many actors, except for, you know, the old school and like the people in The Godfather. And I don't yeah. think you want right. to <laughs> I don't think you, want, I don't think you want any of those. <laughs> I don't know that Al Pacino would make a good Paul. I don't <laughs> Paul Newman's, the Robert Redford's, the... Yeah. Oh, maybe so. Right? Yeah. That's fine. Right. Well, in that case, then, uh, um, Sidney Poitier as Paul would be, I think, really great. <laughs> he would ah. make a good Paul. He's yeah. so well-spoken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so Archippus, 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 I don't know. <laughs> Colossians 4 and 17, and tell Archippus, see to it that you complete the ministry you received in the Lord. And Philemon 1 and 2, to Athea, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your house. Archippus yeah. may have been Philemon and Athea's son. Yeah. Or he could have been a minister in the church that met in their home. What does Paul say about him? Okay. Um, I put, he referred to him as a fellow soldier, assuming he meant in Christ, and that he must complete the ministry he received in the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we call each other like soldiers, you know, we're on the mm -hmm. battlefield, soldiers mm -hmm. for Christ or in Christ. Right. So that's what I took as fellow soldier. Oh, okay, yeah. But when they say I, complete the ministry, do you think he was in training or something? He must complete the ministry he received in the Lord? So would that be like a calling? I could see why they assume yeah. he could have been I, a minister in the church that met in their mm -hmm. home. But it says... To Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your house. So mm -hmm. that kind of um, insinuates that the house belongs to Aphia and Archippus, don't you think? Yeah. In your house, yeah. Yeah, so yep. he could have very well been the son. Yep, that's what my Bible says. What does yours say? That Archippus is most, it's in one of the notes, it says most likely the son of uh, Philemon. Mm. And that Paul's message to Archippus was to fulfill his ministry in the same manner that Paul exhorted, um, exhorted Timothy, you know, to mm -hmm. do. So, yeah, you guys, that's what y'all were saying. So, yeah, mm. that bears it out. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, I, I would agree. Like a um I I think the part the, the part about his calling, what he was called to do, and that the church was meeting in his home, the church which meets in his house. Mm -hmm. Right. In his daddy's yeah, Archibald. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Right, because it's 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 alluding to the fact that Athea and Archippus both live in that house because it says to both of them and the church that meets in your house, right. not her right. house or his house, but, but they're your but both house. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. they are together. True. Yeah. And have the son. Hmm. Mm. I wonder if mine has what was that? That was my Lehman one and two. I'm wondering if maybe mine's got the little things there on the bottom. Um, the little notes. Yeah. Just to see. All right, that was one and two. So mine, no, it doesn't have any side notes and it says exactly what that one says. To Athea, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your home. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep, mm. okay. Anyway, so there you go. And yeah, I'm with Sister Bonner. I wouldn't even know how to cast this crew. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Aristarchus. Okay. Colossians Man. 4 and 10. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, sends you greetings, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, about whom you received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. And Jesus, who is called Justice, also sends greetings. In terms of Jewish converts, these are the only fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have been a comfort to me. And then Philemon 124, Mark... Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my collaborators, greet you too. Luke tells us Aristarchus was one of Paul's traveling companions from Macedonia in Acts 19.29. Soon mm. the whole city was in an uproar. The people seized Gaius, Aristarchus, Paul's traveling companions from Macedonia, and rushed as one man into the theater. We find out later that Aristarchus is from the city of Thessalonica. Acts 27 and 2. We boarded a ship from Haidio. Adramitium. 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 About to sail for ports along the coast of the province of Asia, and we put out to sea. Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica, oh, was with us. He was one of the brothers whom the crowd dragged into the theater in Ephesus when the success of the gospel threatened the city's reputation for Artemis worship. And I didn't type all of Acts 19 in there or I still would have been here this morning. How does, <laughs> <laughs> how does Paul describe Aristarchus in the books of Colossians and Philemon? So reading the, sorry, so reading the, scripture the first a comfort i forgot to put that as a comfort so as a fellow prisoner as a comfort and one of his collaborators but i have to look that up because i'm not sure what he means by one of his collaborators like a collaborator like a collaborator okay like a like one of his helpers, one of his crew, is that? Yes, like a helper or- um, Yeah, working, yeah. Yeah. I say a helper, yeah. Okay. But, you know, someone who collaborated with him. So like, yeah, a worker or a, I don't know, depending on, was that Acts 19? Yeah, helping and working on the same, you know, the same mission, the same objective, this, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. That was the Philemon 1 and 24, where he says, Mark, Aristarchus, Demos, and Luke, my collaborators, greet you too. Yeah, I think his friends are the people he was with. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. you know. Oh, okay. So the people in his, in his in his group. Right. right. The meaning is one who labors with another, an associate in labor. So their work. Okay. Thank you. So you're right. Awesome. A crowd dragged him to the threatened scene with all this crime. So did we do the one with Aristarchus? Yeah, oh, that's the one we just did. So the question was, how did Paul describe okay, Aristarchus? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also okay. what I forgot to put in there as a, com whoop, see, there go my fingers again, a comfort to him. Because he says that up here, um, in terms of Jewish converts, they have been a comfort to me. I have a little, mm -hmm. bit, of, a little bit of background about Archicus I, I could just share. It's not Please. a lot. Please, yeah, that's okay. Mm -hmm. It says, um, it's the Greek name of a Jewish native of Thessalonica. He was one of Paul's companions who was seized by a rioting mob in Ephesus and also accompanied Paul on his trip to Jerusalem and his voyage to Rome. Mm -hmm. So he was mm -hmm. there when all of that stuff was going on. You know, all the different, I, I'm amazed of all the different people and where they came from, like all these different backgrounds that ended up mm -hmm. converting and helping Paul you know, some of them too were, I think one of them, one or two of them were prisoners themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, like you said, term, the, some of them had converted, you know, Jewish converts. And then, you know, here they are working for the same thing. And then, uh, what was it, Onesimus? The, was, wasn't he the, the thief and the slave that ran off? Away yeah, yeah mm -hmm. and then came back. So just all the different, I like that they say the cast and crew because it's such a, mm -hmm. such a diverse guess, yeah. group yes. of, yeah, and doing ended up, you know, like when you're called, you're called and God mm -hmm. doesn't matter what you've done, but what you end up doing for the Lord. And so it just cracks me up reading all this of like where they came from and where they were born or what they've done or you know and then here they are and then paul who was paul who was saul you know who was persecuting christians and then you know went to prison and still here he is glorifying and sharing jesus with everybody it just mm -hmm. blows my mind all right um, number five, does someone else want to read? So this is about Barnabas and Joseph. No? <laughs> sure, I'll read. Okay. Right. Number five, Barnabas, um, let's see, I'm just, Colossians 4.10. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, sends you greetings, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, about whom you received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. 4 and 11, and Jesus, who is called Justice, also sends greetings. In terms of Jewish converts, these are the only fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have been a comfort. Did we read that already? Yeah, but they keep, these are the, oh. the scriptures that they reference for this question. They keep going, okay. Yeah. Uh, and they have been a comfort to me. Reading through the Bible, we meet Barnabas for the first time in Acts 4, 36 through 37. So Joseph, a Levite who was a native of Cyprus, called by the apostles Barnabas, which is translated son of encouragement, sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money and placed it at the apostles' feet. I'm going to bring this up before you start reading. Okay. There you go. 
later when Paul became a Christian, none of the disciples wanted to associate with him, a former Christian, a former Christian killer. So Barnabas took Paul to the apostles and vouched for him. Barnabas is Paul's initial, initial co-laborer in the gospel and is mentioned throughout the book of Acts. He is referred to here because of Mark, more on Mark later. <laughs> what was Barnabas's relationship to Mark? Hmm. So up there it had said, sorry, I'm going to see, and this is why I kept putting that yeah. in there so I wouldn't <laughs> have to do this. <laughs> Down here it says, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. Yes. Barnabas. So he was a cousin. So they were cousins. Okay. All right. Now, mm. is that Mark Mark? That's what I wondered. Is that? I don't think that's the 12 disciple Mark. It's not? Okay. I, I don't think so. Yeah, mm. and, and, and it says, it'll be interesting cause, because it says more on Mark later. Like, which Mark was that? Yeah. Exactly. Maybe that's but what I would, mean. Yeah. But I I would agree with Michelle. I don't think that's. I don't think that it's the Apostle Mark. I'm not sure, but I don't think so. I mm. think so. This one I didn't put an answer because um, I had a question. So we'll we'll read through it and then I'll I'll kind of say what my question was okay so it Amen. says Demos, colossians 4 14 our dear friend luke the physician and Demos greet you and philemon 1 and 24 mark aristarchus Demos, and luke my collaborators greet you too Demos's story has an unhappy ending he deserts paul near the end of paul's life having loved this world, 2 Timothy 4 and 10. But when writing Colossians and Philemon, how does Paul describe him? So in the second one, in Philemon, he describes him as one of his collaborators. Um, however, in Colossians 4.14, he doesn't describe him as a dear friend he says our dear friend luke the physician and demos greet you so at first i was like oh he referred to him as a dear friend but when i read it again no he didn't because he didn't say our dear friends mm -hmm. he said our dear friend luke the physician and demos greet you so that's why I didn't really answer how he described him because it was unclear to me. And unless your Colossians 4 and 14 reads differently, hmm. that kind of got me that he didn't necessarily say that about Demos. He did say it about Luke. Hmm. Colossians 4 and 14? Uh-huh. Oh, that's all it says. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demos greet you. See? That's all it says. And I don't see any notes on that in here. Um, let's see. Are you guys there? I just, my screen went blank. Oh, did it? We can yeah. see you and hear you. We see you. Yeah. See? I wonder why it did that. I can hear you fine. Okay. Yeah, we, can, we get it all from you. I, I was looking to see if there were any notes about Demos, but I don't see anything. I mean, yeah. I'm reading 2 Timothy 4 and 10, and it pretty much says what that says. It says, for Demos, because he loved the world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica, Monica, whatever. 
but it doesn't elaborate on anything else. But I, you know, that was just me when I reread it. I'm like, well, he says our dear friend, Luke, the physician, but then he doesn't say. Mm. So I don't think he's calling Dimas a dear friend, but he did call him one of his collaborators. Mm. He didn't he didn't describe him as anything in Colossians. Right. That's what I'm seeing too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Okay, if, funny. if you guys lose me, I'll be back. I'm still trying to fiddle with figure out how come I've lost everything. You've I don't we can enough. see you and hear you, so I don't know. Yeah, we can see and hit you, so I hit you. I'm just saying. <laughs> this is so weird. Don't hit me. No. Oh, there I'm back, but I it's weird. Okay. Now I see you. Uh-huh. That's good. Yeah. That was weird. Everything mm -hmm. just went dark. Huh. That All is right. interesting. Yes. Hmm. All right. Well, I, I, okay. I can only get what they give us, and if that's all they I give us. I wonder, them. yeah. Where could we, we could look up. Um, in yeah. a in and a I country. think that was kind of like what they were trying to get at, is that we're trying to figure out who they were based on what we have. Right. Mm -hmm. But based on this, he because he must have known something because in the end he loved the world more than he loved god obviously or he would have been there for um for paul so in second timothy 4 and 10 he said he was, you know, pleading with them, come to me, but, you know, unfortunately, Dimas, who loved the world, you know, deserted me and went back to Thessalonica. And well, so maybe he knew that he wasn't a dear friend, but that he was good at being one of his collaborators while he was there. You know what I mean? Because we do have those kind of people in our life where, you know, they'll, they'll be of use to us for a time or they'll be involved when it's convenient for them. And so while they're there, you know, they're, they may be very good at what they do while they're there, but they're not dependable. Hi. You know, and so, so look, I found um, in the encyclopedic, encyclopedic, encyclopedic index to my Bible, it says Demas was governor of the people and he follows Paul in Colossians 4 and 14, uh -huh. but he forsakes Paul in 2 Timothy 4 and 10. Uh -huh. 11, I'm going to look for that. 2 Timothy. Yeah. The mosque, because he loved the world, has deserted me and gone. gone. Uh -huh. I guess had gone. And that was the second time he was gone back. So to he was more of a person. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he was more in the oh. world. And um, yes. And I, that's probably why he, he said he was a, a collaborator, not so much as a friend. Right. But he worked with him. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But so, really, in there, he really doesn't say, like you guys are saying, there was really no description of who he was no. at that at that place. Other at that than, place in the Bible. Yeah, other than that little bit that they give us. Um, right. And I think I think Paul, you know, you kind of know those, you know, you know. And so maybe I'm looking at a part of this. It says um, there is also a biblical evidence that Damas was with Paul during Paul's second imprisonment in Rome, at least for a while. Then something happened. Damas forsook uh, Paul, abandoned the ministry, and left, the, left town. Paul wrote about the sad situation. So Damas, because he loved the world, 
he has deserted me and gone to Thessalonia. So the so I don't know. The Greek verb used in the original implies that Damas had not merely left Paul, but had left him in the lurch. That is, Damas had abandoned Paul in a time of need. The apostle was in prison facing a death sentence, and that's when Damas chose to set sail. Okay. Undoubtedly, Paul was deeply let down by Damas. It's never easy to see a friend and associate in whom you placed your trust forsake you in the midst of hardship. The separation caused by the moth desertion of Paul was not merely uh, spiritual, but spiritual. The moth left Rome because he fell in love with the world. In other words, the moth chose the corrupt value system of the unsaved world over what heaven values. As the uh, NLT translate, Demos loves the things of life. That was 2 Timothy 4.10. So we don't know the details of Demos' situation, but it's evident that Demos decided that what Satan had to offer in his life was better than what God had to offer. Woo! I don't want to be anywhere near Demos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, you stay over there. Oh, Demos was tough. Yeah. Oh. Alicia, did that come out of your Bible or was that? No, that it was. I looked at. Um, I was looking it up on looking him up on the uh, uh, internet, and oh. it went to. Uh, and it says, "Who was the moss in the Bible?" Okay. And it's one of these things that says, ah. God, "Yeah, got okay. questions." Thank God you for that information. That was yeah. good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so that gives us a light on why now we know, why, yes. you know, their relationship. Wow. Well, you can figure uh, there's, you know, we talked a lot about how Paul was, you know, I mean, the man had the spirit of God on him and he went through a lot more than we, than we could ever think of ourselves having the courage or the perseverance of doing like Paul. And when mm -hmm. he had collaborators with him, I'm sure there were people who bowed out maybe sometimes because they were fearful of what was going on and being imprisoned. And there were others who felt like I got other responsibilities somewhere else. I can't, you know, I, I can't devote my whole time. And then you got those Demosses oh, that, yeah. that, you know, that say, you know, this ain't worth it. I want to enjoy life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't grown up in jail and then, so you know, the whole spectrum I'm sure the whole spectrum of people that you know Paul's thing was tight you know that was like you, <laughs> yeah. you better count the cost as they say so I'm sure he has cast the characters and then he had those that were you know saying, hey, no matter how hard it gets, I'm here with you. I'm going to go all the way. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's just that variety of, of uh, people. Yeah. Right? And well, you too. know what I was thinking about when I was, I think when I was typing this, although I think Jim's lesson had something to do with Paul as well. I don't know. They all kind of mesh together sometimes, which is mm -hmm. kind of good. I get all kinds of information. But, you know, I was thinking when they were, you know, Paul, no, it was KP's choir one for this week. Mm. So they were talking about how, you know, Paul was on his way to persecute more Christians and take them in mm -hmm. for, you know, believing in Christ and, and mm -hmm. professing and stuff. And, and that's when he got struck down and was blinded and all of that. Mm -hmm. And it, I was kind of thinking as I was typing, like, you know, yes, he went to prison, he was beaten, he went through a lot, you know, and then through that whole thing, he was, you know, professing God and, and sharing Christ with, with people. And I thought, you know, I wonder if, you know, not that anyone deserves to be beaten, I'm not saying any of that, but, you know, mm -hmm. kind of where God had him and what had happened to him you know, of, you know, cause you know, God said, I, I, he knows that, um, 
he sent, who was it that he sent? He sent Ananias mm -hmm. to go. He said, go to, um, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and see a man there called Saul. And he said, you know, he has seen through a vision that a man named Ananias is going to come and heal his blindness, right? Mm -hmm. And so he said he knows that, you know, and then Ananias was like, okay, God, you know, I'll do it. But, you know, this guy is known for, you know, killing Christians and this and that. Mm -hmm. And he said he knows that he has to suffer for me, you know. And so I wondered, I started thinking like, I wonder if prison was kind of where God had him because if he was out in the world that maybe he would have been tempted to go back to his old ways eventually. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I was just a thought, not that there's anything in the Bible about it, but you know, sometimes, um, you know, I'll start thinking as I'm typing these things, like, you know, why, okay, God met him there. Jesus, you know, said, you know, Saul, Saul, why thou, you know, why is thou persecuted me? Or, you know, however he said it. And then, you know, not too long later, he ended up going to prison and that's where he did his ministry. Mm -hmm. But you kind of have to wonder, you know, God has that plan for everybody and that, you know, because look at Demas did all this work, but there he was out and was tempted by the world. And in the end, that's where he ended up. Mm -hmm. Not that Paul would have ended up there. I'm just saying, like, I don't know. My mind just kind of started going and I'm like, maybe. Paul, in, I, I've just I, always looked at Paul's thing as being more of a testimony, not so much he would go back into the world, but you know, it made him stronger, you know, mm -hmm. and in the people around him, you know, he was a witness to them, you know, and, um, you know, the, his suffering and everything that he, he had gone through, you know, to see, you know, like they were saying, like, they didn't trust him at first because they knew that whatever right. he put his mind into, he was there. And so when he changed over and became, you know, a Christian, you know, you know, believing in Christ, then it was just like, oh, heck no, you know. <laughs> Not that guy. I know that yeah. guy. <laughs> so I think, you know, through it all, when Barnabas had to step in, intercede and say, no, he's a changed man. He's this way. And I think, you know, then, you know, the other apostles began to accept him. So I think he was put there as a witness as to we can change no matter how hard, you know, our life is or what we're doing you know, God has a message for, you know, every time I read through the Bible and I just see how right. he has, you know, changed people's life and, you know, and you hear, you know, about the prostitute and how this happened and, you know, and, you know, and you look at God's lineage and, you know, what he, what, it, what the people that were in his lineage, you know, like they weren't all perfect, but yet and still Christ was, you know. Mm -hmm. It, it's just really interesting, but yeah, I think he has to say it for a reason. Well, there could be some various things why why yeah. Paul had to endure those things. You know, Paul, he you you heard him say himself, "Oh, there's nobody. Hey, I, I know all the 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 scriptures. I come from. I'm a Roman <laughs> citizen. I'm this. I'm that." And yeah. God God uses all. He's not wasteful. He uses everything. So maybe Paul had to be. You know, hey, we look, yeah, put hey, down, huh? that, you know, keep that. Let's keep that pride <laughs> down, right? You know, mm -hmm. Keep that pride. Yeah. And then the other way it could be is that people, like you said, a testimony. People see you beat up, thrown in prison, and that, and, and they're gonna say, you know what? He's authentic. I think he believes, you know, what he's saying. <laughs> We're gonna say, I think he does. He's speaking the truth. Nobody's gonna be wanting to get beat up and thrown in prison and all these things happen to them for something that's not right or if he's not genuine. So, you know. It's, yeah, it's a whole bunch, yeah. Yeah, it can be a whole, all of those things working mm -hmm. together for all the people that he was uh, impressing upon, you know? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. Interesting, yep. 
it, it is. But all those things are, I think, I think right. they're good. Everything that you were saying, I think it could be applied. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, because even if he did not deserve to go to prison for what he was doing for Christ, all the stuff maybe that he had done before. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, it is a testimony for sure. And that, you know, no matter what situation we're in, that we can get the word of God out there, you know, and we can share the love of Christ. We can share the word of God. We can, you know, if he can do it from prison with bad eyesight, we can do it, you know, where we yeah. are certainly. So, um, yeah. Mm, okay. Cool. All right. I think, well, we'll I think it's also, I, I'm sorry. I think, no, I think it's also how we become who we are because of the challenges, you know, oh, and yeah. we get to a certain yeah. place and we, and we change. And sometimes people say, well, I knew her when, you know, but, <laughs> but we can yeah. all change. Thank you, Jesus. You know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and those challenges that were changes that we're put through, we get on the other side and, you know, it makes us who we are. It makes us a different person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? right. So true. And yeah. hopefully for the better. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. But you know, yeah. there's always those that that try to bring you back to who you were. And it's like, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I remember when you would have done this. Yeah. Or that. Yeah, me too. Thank God for Jesus. <laughs> I don't do that. Anymore. I don't do that anymore. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm not I don't look down on people that do. I'm just grateful that I don't. Right. Yeah. right. Yes. You know? That's true. Wow. Okay. Well, so New Year's, Happy New Year, everybody. We'll start <laughs> on the 5th, we'll start um, on number seven, which will now probably become number two once I take all of the other ones off. But um, we'll start okay. with Epaphras on next Tuesday. And then, so we decided Monday, right? The 4th? Yeah. At... I wrote it down and now I can't remember. I did think we said say, the Monday before the Monday. Right. What time did we say? Time. One? We didn't. I we thought didn't. we said like uh the afternoon. I thought we right. said like two o'clock or something, oh, but it was yeah. two or three. Yeah. It was. You're right. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I think it was like two. Yeah, because I think you had something, Harriet, in the morning. But, but I thought, I, here's what I thought, though, if we're going to, I know we're still, you want to finish up and maybe we can discuss it after we. Okay. And then I'll pause. Yeah. Let me, let okay. me pray us out and then I'll pause it and end okay. it out. Um, okay. So I'm trying to, I was sort of writing down little things here and there, but uh, we'll, we'll get through it. All right. Gracious and heavenly father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for giving us a brand new day to rejoice and be glad. And thank you for waking us up in our right minds and giving us that portion of health and strength, Lord, and just bringing us right back here together to share your word for the very last time this year, Lord. And Amen. Year. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. For thank thank you. And all of the wonderful things that it brought. Yes, I know mm. it brought a lot of devastation, Lord, but it brought more fellowship. It brought more funship. It, it brought us, a, a, you know, a strengthening in our relationship with you and with each other, Lord. And for that, we're so grateful. There's so many things to be thankful for that happened in 2020, Lord. And we don't want to, we don't want to overcloud that with, with the, you know, the, the not so good things that happened throughout the year. And Lord, we just ask forgiveness of our sins. And we thank you for your, your grace and your mercy. And Lord, we continue to lift up all of those prayer requests that were mentioned at the beginning, those that we may have forgotten, those that weren't mentioned. And, and Lord, you just, you know, you know the needs out there and, and you know what, where people are in their minds and their hearts. And we just ask yeah. that just, you know, put your covering around this whole world right now, Lord. And we continue to lift up Joanne in New York, Lord, and just strengthen her and, and her entire family and, and Michelle's mom to be able to just be a blessing to them and be a source of strength and, and venting and, and comfort, um, just as some of these people around Paul were for him and for the Duncan family at the loss of, of Deacon Duncan's sister, Lord, and just that, you know, that's going to affect the whole family. And so we just ask that you 
you know, that you just comfort them in, in a mighty way and send them a peace that surpasses all understanding. And Lord, um, we just thank you for being able to, you know, just like Paul was in that situation where, you know, anyone else, the last thing they would have thought of is, is making sure that they got the gospel of Christ out. And Lord, you know, just even being in this pandemic and having to come up with different ways. The great thing that we have in our favor is that, Lord, your word never changes. We don't have to change your word. Your, your word never changes. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The only thing we had to do was come up with different ways to share it and get it out there. You know, just like Paul had to adapt to being in prison and getting your word out there, Lord. And, and we just, you know, we, we thank you for the blessing of being able to, to just have different ways of getting your word out there and, and sharing it together. You know, we're not only sharing it with other people, but we're sharing it in different ways with each other. And, and we're still growing in you and our relationship with you and with each other. And we're so grateful for that. And just lastly, Lord, and as I was studying this morning and my, my, my Bible passage was Galatians 15 and five about, you know, if you bite and devour each other, be careful or you will be destroyed by each other. And Lord, it just, reminding us that as Christians and, and fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, that it matters how we treat each other, that we just remember to continue to treat each other with love and respect, because as believers, that's so important. And that we have to remember that unbelievers are watching us. And when two Christians are going at it and treating each other so badly and trying to destroy each other in different ways or bring each other down, that you know, that that's not reflection of you. That is not the Christ in us, Lord. And so we just have to remember to, to treat each other, you know, with love and forgive each other and, and talk things out and pray about it and pray for each other. And so um, that just, you know, really was heavy on my heart this morning after I did that study. So Lord, I just thank you for these women. I thank you for this study. I thank you for this ministry in this church. And our church family and, and just all that we've been able to do and accomplish this year and that we continue to just grow stronger and be able to, sh to keep on sharing throughout 2021 Lord and, and just new and better ways and that we reach more and more people and, and tell a dying world about a living savior. And so Lord, as we close out this year, we just, we, we continue to thank you. We, ask you to blanket us in your peace and forever keep love at the forefront of our minds Let that be the guiding light and all we set out to do. We thank you for your word in this message and we hope that it touches somebody in a mighty way that, that is just maybe lacking in hope or, or just needs you, Lord. We all need you, but maybe they'll just hear something that really just, you know, makes them say, what must I do to be saved? So Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise and honor and worship you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. 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 All right. I am going to stop share. So everybody have a wonderful new year. And I'm going to pause it now because we're going to talk. And <laughs> we love right. you. Thank you for your support. And we'll see you in 2021.